Hello, Michael here with another How Do I Render tutorial. Today we're going to be having a look at how to render teeth using Redshift in Maya. So to start off, we're just going to use a very simple polygonal cone. Just the one that comes straight out of the shelf in Maya under the polygon settings. You can see that we've got a plane set up already here for the floor and I've got a light set up as well. Alright, so to start off, we're going to create a subsurface scattering material. So we'll go to the Hypershade Editor and we'll just go down to Subsurface Scattering. And then we'll assign this to our cone. And I'll just change that to be called tooth. Okay, so in the Hypershade Editor, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a ramp to describe the color of this. Uh, I'm basing this tooth on a reference I got from a subscriber, which uh, basically is gonna require a bit of subsurface scattering for the um, teeth. Um, I'm probably gonna have a little bit more specularity in the end. And also I'm gonna use a ramp to describe that darker area towards the gum. The first thing we're going to do is hit tab, we're going to type in ramp, and we'll get a ramp texture node. And what I want to do is run the out color into the scatter color and the subsurface color. So under the material, you'll see you've got subsurface here. Um, so the subsurface color is essentially like the, the first point of contact for the light. And part of the light entering the mesh is going to bounce back at you, that's the subsurface color. Then the scatter color is the light that actually passes through that, that initial layer and then bounces around inside and then comes back out the surface at another point. Um, but I'm actually going to make them both the same color. Um, you can make them different colors if you want, if you want the internal scattering to be a different color, but um, I found for the teeth that making them the same is not the worst. Uh, now before I go any further, I'll just quickly show you this mesh here has got UVs on it by default. So if I go to the UV editor, essentially what's happening here is that we've got our cone. Um, the bottom of it is this ring down here, the underside, and then you've got um, the faces uh, around the outside of it leading up towards the top of the UV plane on the Y axis. And it's important to know this for when we use the ramp so we can get the ramp sort of affecting it in a way that makes sense. So I'm going to make this tooth quite yellow, sort of just a mid-range saturation. And I'm also going to add a uh, sort of dark sort of browny yellow there which is going to be where the tooth connects with the gum, that sort of dark um, area. Now with subsurface scattering and redshift um, where I'm just going to turn GI on uh, but also I'm going to go to the output and turn off force progressive and the reason I do this is because if you've got on progressive the subsurface scattering doesn't actually function so now with it just set to non-progressive it will render out the whole shot but you'll see that the subsurface scattering is working and because redshift's so quick um, it's very little time at all, especially if we've just got it set to a low sample rate. So you can see that the subsurface scattering is working. Um, we'll just go over to our ramp node here and we'll just pull in that darkness until it sort of hits the bottom there. So that's essentially what I'm looking for there is just the dark area to just clip the bottom. And so from the front, you'll still be able to see the dark area, but not as much because it's not getting that subsurface scattering. Um, the light is mainly being reflected back at the camera but because when you're behind it, you'll see the transmission, you get that nice subsurface glow. Now you can continue to change this a little bit if you want. You could also add in some diffuse. So um, if you're wanting the subsurface scattering to still be quite apparent, you need to keep it quite low. Um, anywhere up to about 0.5, I think looks kind of good. Um, and then after that, you're sort of losing the effect of the subsurface scattering. And it sort of becomes redundant at that point. But that's essentially all there is to it. Um, I'll show you how it works in practice though. All right, so you might be familiar with this gentleman here if you've been following me on Instagram. Um, so I've used the same technique to apply subsurface scattering to his teeth. Um, I probably still need to work this a little bit more because I think the teeth, aren't, the teeth aren't popping enough. Now you'll see that I've got in progressive mode which means that the subsurface scattering isn't working. You'll see how much of a difference that makes when I get behind this tooth here. So you'll see it's just essentially working as a diffuse model. So if I switch that uh, progressive off and then re-IPR that, you'll see that we're starting to get that transmission. Now I've still got I've got it set actually relatively low to be honest, um, and I've got quite a bit of diffuse in. Um, 
something to bear in mind with this is you need to sort of figure out what you're going to use your model for in the end. If you're using it for animation and you're not really planning on seeing the backside of the teeth, the subsurface scattering isn't going to add a whole lot to the to like human teeth for example because there's seldom light actually coming from behind the teeth to give you that subsurface scattering effect so if you can i would actually go to a diffused model where possible with this model it's not too bad because obviously his mouth can be wide open and you can see the light coming from all sides so if there are lights behind this model then it would still show the subsurfing subsurface scattering effect on the front of the teeth so if I reduce that diffuse amount, you'll start to see a lot more of that sort of internal subsurface glow now here. Yeah. But yes, as I say, there's probably a little bit more work to do on this. Now I'm still using the same technique with the UV mapping. So it's UV mapped from bottom to top. So that ramp affects it um, darker at the bottom and lighter at the top. Same with the subsurface scattering as well. And with very little setup time, you get a pretty decent looking render. So yes, um, that's really pretty much all there is to it. Um, hopefully that's been useful to you. Um, if it has, make sure you click the like button so other people on YouTube can find it. And if you haven't already, make sure you're subscribed as I do a couple of tutorials for all sorts of CG software like Redshift and Maya and other products as well. If you'd like to stay up to date even further, check out the Facebook page, link in the description. That's it for now though. Thank you very much for watching and happy rendering.